Welcome back. It's day five of the Hyundai 49er, 49er FX and NACRA 17 World Championships right here on Auckland's waterfront. My name's Anna Wilcox and this here is Jesse Took. Jesse, we've talked a lot about Gold Fleet racing so far, but now it's all about the medal race. What's that about? Yeah, we hit the weekend. It's a big super Saturday out there today. Teams are going to need to bank three really good races if they want to find themselves in that top ten. Exciting stuff, and we're going to see the 49er boys up first this morning, and that's the first time we're going to see Pete Burling and Blair Took in action. What do they have to do to get above the Germans? I think it's almost a case of just keeping things simple for the boys. The pressure is all on the Germans. They are being hunted down, so it'll be how they handle that pressure. Well, let's find out. Let's check out the morning highlights. One, now. We're underway. This is race four of the finals. Bad start by Germany. Good start by Berling and Took in the middle of the line. So Germany right up at the committee boat end. We're not able to sail around the committee boat. They're in the second row. We talked about the left-hand side being strong, so looking like these guys heading out to that side of the racetrack at the moment, definitely in a favourable position. Gee, you got big separation. Yeah, and it's looking like a little bit of a right-hand shift early on here, which is really good for Logan dunning Beck and Oscar Gunn. First three boats now. We'll see the yellow mark. That's the top mark. Set up for a bear away set. So it's France first, New Zealand second, Spain third. It's interesting, so the French have decided to take right hand gate and we're going to have a split at the bottom mark. So Germany are first, New Zealand should come into shot and they're just following them around the mark. So both those crews like what they saw on the right hand side or the bottom mark gate is uh, that marker is closer to the top mark. It looks to me like Danny Beck and uh, Oscar Gunn are really thriving in these conditions. They look like they've got a good feel and good setup with the boat. Definitely showing some uh, good signs of boat speed there. As we look then down to Lourdes, early regatta leader, early in the rig, Bill Stein, Dylan Fletcher Scott for GBR, who have already been selected for the Olympics by their selectors. We'll have a look at the manoeuvre. So at the top mark, no change. It is France in the lead. Followed by New Zealand. The New Zealand combination of Logan Dunning, Beck, Oscar Gunn, as they roll into a jibe set. So it's Germany four in the lead uh, for overall. Second place overall is New Zealand 77. Burling and two. What they've done a real nice job there on the upwind, Peters. Remember, there was a couple of boats between the Germans and the Kiwis, so... New Zealand is uh, Burling and Took doing a nice job in the upland to close that distance up and sit just one place behind the Germans now. I've got the French in the lead again, comfortably. It's looking like France will take this one out. Second is close with Logan Dunning Beck and Botin is having a crack at the New Zealanders. It's going to be close for second and third. So f the first boat's over the line. Logan Dunning Beck sneaks through to just get second and Botin from Spain comes in third. Down come Burling and Took. We can see them coming in. Eight and a half knots in tenth position. Can they have a piece of Hawkins from GBR? Are they close enough? In come Burling and Took to just snitch it on the line and it's those valuable points that are so valuable. Overall, it's closed up. We're down to six points differential between first and second. It's Heil and Plusel, Burling and Took. Burling and Heil in the same patch of water, right down at the pin end, but there's a lot of congestion down there. We're coming up to the start. Getting off the line clean is so crucial. We're underway. Who's it going to be down at the lower end as they come off the line? I'm seeing Poland pushing the bow, bow out. Ireland, Germany four have got a very nice start. I have not seen Burling and Took yet. Dunning Beck and Oscar Gunn at the moment showing a really good set of wheels. Uh, they were a little bit behind that advantage line off the start, but they're showing great upwind speed here and they're just nipping at the heels of the Australians and coming out of this right-hand side of the race course with a little bit of a wind shift. At the moment, we're seeing them sit in second place. So nice beat from those Kiwis again. So Jack Hawkins, Chris Thomas from GBR lead. 
then there's a gaggle of boats coming in and who it's next it looks like it might be the swiss boat so first boat around then it will be ne the netherlands then switzerland then the first of the new zealanders and burling and tuka right in there to windward of them boat seven and that's logan dunning back and burling so australia then we've got burling and tuka just coming round behind the Austrians, a very uh, solid upwind. They need to, look at that, get downwind. They, that's a delayed hoist. That will be costing them valuable meters. The Austrians carted them up beyond the top mark and there will be boats down to Lewin. They'll be absolutely filthy about that. So it was real fisticuffs at the top mark between the Austrian 29 and Burling and Took. And the Austrians have gone round the bottom mark gate ahead of Burling and Took as they still come down towards the bottom mark. So that manoeuvre did cost them. Looks like the Austrians are uh, coming across to maybe tack right on top of the Kiwis again here to affect the breeze, but it is that British team who has quite a healthy lead considering we are on the Gold Fleet. They've done a nice job of sailing fast and not making any mistakes, and that's made it very difficult for the chasing pack to close up that buffer that they've built out in the lead this is our race leaders as they come down can burling and to get one back on bilstein bilstein is port now i think they're clear ahead the austrians kiwis are behind you can betcha there will be that will go down in the box so gbr 17 take that one out then burling and took just to win with bilstein so they new zealanders pinged one back on the last downwind. They'll be happy about that. Well, we've got a change at the front of the leaderboard with that race. Burling and Took with coming up to lead now by four points over Highland, Plusel, Riul and Amaros dropping back. More conservative from the middle of the line. Off we go. This is the last race of the day. It has not opened up at the windward end for Germany. So another poor start for Germany. A good, solid start, I think, for Burling and Took in the centre of the line. So th that left-hand group of Burroughs from the US, Fisher from France, Dixon from Ireland, Fletcher, Scott, GBR, that's the leading group. And uh, finally it came. So Burroughs, Ian Burroughs from the US. And of course the US are fighting to try and get into the Tokyo Olympics. They are yet to qualify. So US 450 are in the lead. They tack at the mark. They have taken the benefit of a big lefty. This will blow their scorecard apart if they can't come through the field. They're in last position. Remember, they came in today as the golden Labrador of the fleet leading overall, but well, the wheels have come unstuck and they've just been going further and further back in the fleet. I think the other important point that we, we need to make sure we point out is the other Kiwi teams who are moving up the field and these couple of teams at the top of the leaderboard that haven't had good days, you know, speaks volumes for, you know, Dunning Beck and, and Gunn and also McCarty and McKenzie who are on an absolute charge today. They're both, you know, sailing very clean and fast around the racetrack. Nothing really, uh, no, nothing really major in terms of mistakes and, well, they're just doing the basics well and that's uh, doing them doing them wonders overall. See how, how low Blair just keeps his body and his head super flat close to the water as well. So they're projecting their body weight as far outboard as you possibly can. And in these conditions, when you're trying to carry as much power as you, as you can with these boats, it, you can transfer that into speed pretty nicely. And well, they're pretty slick in well, the boat, aren't they? First round was Ireland, Dixon. Next, we've got USA. And that's Ian Burrows. Then it will be Burling and Took. Well, they could they could win this because <laughs> the two boats to Lewin are, are soft. Look, look at them. Look at the difference. New Zealand on a roll. Burling and Took putting on an absolute masterclass of how to do it. They're coming down towards the finish. They saw an opportunity on the downwind run. I just think today is the day that people will say, can these guys ever be beaten? NZL 77 win coming from behind.
story of the day. Here we go. Burley and Took jump into the lead. Highland Plusel stay in second. Fletcher Scott and Bithell in third. That makes up the podium. A massive morning for our 49er fleet in Gold Fleet. Yeah, Anna, it was really good out there. Great conditions, and our boys threw it down. Three really strong races. Great for Pete Burling and Blair Took to get their first win in Gold Fleet too. Yeah, they knew they just needed to be consistent, but I think it's a big statement to win a race as well. Totally. And what happened to the German guys? There's been a big change up in the leaderboard. Yeah, look, we talked about it. They had all the pressure on them. They had the target on their back, and obviously they just caved under the pressure out there. Pete and Blair weren't the only Kiwis to have a good day today, and you actually caught up with Logan Dunning Beck and Oscar Gunn, who had a great day. Well, boys, it's starting to rain here, but certainly didn't rain on your parade out there. You had a good day. Yeah, it was a solid day. It was a lot better than yesterday. We just went home last night and reassessed everything and came out today and just sorted out some problems that we figured out from yesterday. Well, no meat pies out for you there today, but you got a good burger? Yeah, yeah, no, and was on the barbecue doing a really good job. And what do you like in your burger? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of sauce in here. Yeah, real saucy burger. There's about three different sauces. Well, it looks saucy out there on the race course as well, Oscar. Good day. What was the key out there today? Just good starts, keeping the boat going fast and getting to the sides and keeping your eyes out on the rest of the fleet. It looks like quite a few of those European teams had some shocking days. The Germans struggled, the Frenchies struggled as well. You guys are chasing them down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is our home patch, you know, so we, um, we've got to do the crowd justice and, and try and put on a good show. And we're standing in front of the boat here. What have you guys named it? Oh, I'm not actually sure. You have to ask Logan that one. Logan. Oh, on the entry form, it's uh, BB, which um, <clears throat> well, I probably shouldn't say it on camera, but we'll leave it up to the imagination. <laughs> Righty ho. Well, the imagination goes wild on what you boys could do tomorrow. Good luck out there. Cheers. Thank you. Any final words, Logan? No, I'm pretty comfortable with that. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, we'll keep it clean. All right, can I have a bite of your burger? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Events like this wouldn't be possible without a huge amount of volunteers. Jesse's gone walkabout, but I think he's gone to catch up with a couple of them. Well, Harold, this is where the action happens. Would you consider this to be the most important container in New Zealand? Well, at this present time, it certainly is. We, we're keeping tabs on what those guys are doing out there. Um, and, you know, we've got to release boats to them when they're ready to, to take them. So there's quite a lot of coordination goes on out of here. So. As you say, it's a very important container. And who behaves more like kids? The kids themselves or the sailors when they're throwing a hissy fit at events like this? Well, it's the big kids with all the big boats that seem to be the difficult ones. But um, no, these guys are great. They're Olympic sailors. They've got wonderful aspirations and, and they're here doing their best. And we've got to do our best to make sure they get a fair shot at it. So um, that's what our role is all about. So you are... Harold's right-hand lady. You guys seem to have fun in here. Yeah, it's awesome. Harold's a good person to work for. He's always lots of fun. Harold used to coach me many years ago, so it's nice to be back working with Harold again. And you've got a lot of uh, importance here, not just in the race results, but also you've got these special little vouchers here. Am I able to steal one of these? What's it worth? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one of the beers. <laughs> Fair enough, I'll take that. Alrighty, what's going on down here? Good, how are you going? Yeah, pleased to meet you. How are you? Yeah, I'm Jesse. Yeah, John, I'll tell you. Oh, I hear they call you Old Z. Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. And that's because of the last name, obviously? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Although I did get called John Boy from a boy a long time ago, so therefore it's sort of got a bit of a brand name now. I think what's so great about these regattas is that we have such a high performance of people doing the jobs, you know, doing all the jobs, and I think that's what makes it special. And you got your wagon here, so you take this one around with you? Yes, well basically it's a workshop and accommodation all in one. It's got a shower and everything. Because what happens is you finish about 11 o'clock at night, grab some sleep. Sometimes you get up early hours of the morning, of course, to, after the uh, glass has gone off to do the gel coating, whatever. So, What's yeah. your favourite tool out of them all? Oh, it'd be hard to say, but I'm a builder, so it'd have to be a hammer, wouldn't it, I suppose? <laughs> Brilliant. Love that. Well, Old Z, you're doing an amazing job. We all really appreciate it, and no I know the problem. sailors definitely do as well. Yeah. Good, good, to, good to see you, and uh, wish everybody well for tomorrow. Thanks, mate. You're a real champion.
We've got an exciting afternoon of racing coming up with the FX 49er Gold Fleet. And with the middle race lingering in the distance, there's a lot at stake. Absolutely, and there's a couple of really strong teams currently just sitting outside that top 10. The Polish, Malzaka and Loboda, expect to see them make a charge. And also Suarez and Van der Velden from Spain, I expect to see them creep into the top 10 as well. So there's lots of battles going on. Molly and Alex are currently sitting in that top 10, but it would be awesome to see them have a good day under their belt. Yeah, hopefully the girls can string together three solid results out there. All right, well, let's find out how they go. We're off as we come up towards the start, and now we are underway. Down towards the lower end, it is the Netherlands who will just sneak round the rubber boat, and they're off for Mol Zucker. It's uh, all about can they squeeze up over that ley line. The Polish boat now can squeeze up underneath, and it affects the airflow of the trailing boat, and they're on ley line. Top mark for the first time, it's Poland, followed by the Netherlands. I think the conditions are... Oh, big problem there for the second place getter. They ran over the spinnaker. Helid goes to the top, but then the foot of the sail fell in the water, and it's a massive handbrake. Our leaders, this is the Polish team, 888, the team of Malzaka and Laboda. A lot of boats coming in on port, and what will the Swedes do? Round the mark, they come, heading up when for the second time. We've got Ida Nielsen from Denmark in the in the left. Scandinavia one two at the moment with Denmark in first and Norway in second. Poland, who are our leaders at the bottom, they are in third place. They picked the wind shift. They picked the pressure shift perfectly. Now it's decision time. What way are we going to go? Go straight. It was good to them on the upward leg over towards Takapuna. I suspect they'll head that way again because if there is a big change, I think it'll come off the land. We can see that the long jive on the downwind is going to be starboard jive. Now, they're going to be holding a long way down and the breeze did seem to be a lot stronger on that side of the course on that upwind. So I would be doing exactly what these ladies are doing at the moment. They'll pick up the ley line before they jive. So that's one jive and into the finish they're looking at. Coming down to the line, it is Denmark. They came from behind. They got a beautiful bit of pressure from the right-hand side up Takapuna. That's their second consecutive win. Next over the line, it is Norway. Good result for them. No change at the top. It's still Grail and Kunz. Deficit between first and second has reduced. Lutz and Boyka down in fourth. It's coming up to 10 seconds. Who is going to be clean off the line? There's yeah. still a whole bunch Three, of port tackers. Two, one. So this is race five of the finals. And have we got a port ender? Whoa, Italy, Italy, 127. Are they able to squeeze around the bow? I 14 start. I'm not sure whether they got away with that or not. Meanwhile, back at the lead, it is Denmark who tack, and that's Schutt and Nilsby. Can they squeal through? Maybe just. That was close. And that's Paris Henkin and Anna Tobias. They are trying to qualify the US for Tokyo. As they go for their hoist, up go the Jenica. Now they'll shoot it on. They've got a good little lead over Dobson and Tidy from GBR. Oh, not a good hoist for the GBR. They've, they've got a problem. GBR have made an error at the top mark. Big laughing match going on here. Defence by GBR to try and prevent the Japanese crew from rolling over the top. But Japan have gained a spot over GBR at that first mark. Meanwhile, out in the front, it is USA. Fully launched, breeze on, and they're doing about 16 knots heading down to the bottom mark gate. Paris Henkin eases the boat round the mark, so halfway round the course, it is USA leading. Second, it'll be Japan. Now you can see behind them, the Brazilians, they're currently back in at 12th, and the Dutch team who are in second place overall, they are in 11th, directly ahead of the Brazilians. So we could have a little bit of a tussle. 
as they come round, Jibes, uh, uh, Veraway set, up goes the Jenica, it's, it's up, it's clean, hook in, and they're on the downwind leg to the finish. But it's all USA at the moment, and the priority for the USA is to get a country qualification for the Olympic Games. And they go through to take that race victory. It was gifted to them at the top mark. They'll be happy with that performance. Let's have a look at overall. So we've got Grail and Kunz still in the lead by one point from Bickering and Duits. Near uh, Nace and Ronigan from Norway still in the touch with that good second place. They come up to third. First and second are both on Port Tack. They're slow off the line, the fleet. And the two race regatta leaders are hunting for a hole to get out of action, get out of jail. And meanwhile, on starboard are the rest of the field. The reality of advantage will, I think, stay with this group on the left-hand side, including Alex Maloney and Molly Meach. Here they come in, that's the heli shot. So it's France leading, also doing a tax set. New Zealand coming in at pace, will be second. Looking for a clean set from New Zealand, uh, Molly Meach. Up go the black spinnaker, yep, Jenica, good set. She thought, oh, it's all action again at the top mark. Two boats lapping. I didn't quite get who it was. There's plenty of verbal going on. Late afternoon, beautiful colours. So in at mark two, bottom mark gate, it's France leading New Zealand. Yeah, but for Brazil, they're in no man's land. We can see they're on uh, port and uh, they were set up for the right-hand gate, but the gate closed for them, so they've had to sail all the way over to the left-hand gate, and that will be costly for Brazil. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be really interesting to see how those boats on that right-hand side of the course do as they come back together. Currently, the Kiwis definitely look like they have the advantage, but if anything we have seen today is that it is very unstable. Now we have a lead change. That right-hand side has paid off. So the team of Paris Henkin and Anna Tobias. And we have another lead change. It's Poland, the team of Mel Zucker and Loboda. They have moved into first place. Ah, they're on ley line. So coming into the top mark for the final time, it's Netherlands six who lead set Van uh, Anholt and Jan Matt at lead the Polish combination of Melzaka and Lobada. So as they sit there now, if Beckering beats Grail in this one, they'll go back to being tied for first place with one day to go in the regatta. Coming across, can they get round the bow of the red spinnaker? The, oh, I think New Zealand uh, nearly fell out. They were forced to jive away. So Alex Maloney got really tricked into a port starboard incident there. As they come down towards the end, it's uh, Odile Van uh, Aldholt and uh, Jan Matt. They'll take that race out. Next over the line, it will be Poland, uh, Malsaka. Third will go to USA, it's Paris Henkin. Overall, new leader. So the new leader is Beckering and Dutz, one point ahead of Grail and Kunz. Ness and Ronigan. What an action-packed afternoon for the 49er FX fleet. It was a really tense day. There was a lot of screaming going on out there. Big moments on the line. This is Olympic qualification and qualifying for that medal race tomorrow. Totally, and we did see a, a shuffle in that leaderboard as well. Yeah, and it's not a surprising one for me. The Dutch girls, who were the world champions last year, they've jumped up ahead of the reigning Olympic champions. What a juicy battle that one is. 100%. And we did see Molly and Alex get caught in a little bit of heat there at the end. Yeah, they had a big uh, collision course going on with the Polish girls. The Polish girls had to avert right at the last minute, and it'll be interesting to see what comes of that one. Exactly, we'll find out tomorrow, and tomorrow is a huge action-packed day. By the end of tomorrow, we are going to know who is the world champion. I can't wait. Tune in tomorrow.